Well, welcome back to Branson Off Grid. I'm going to do a uh, 2020 update. So this will be 10 years in to using this uh, 2010 Polaris EV. So I'm just over the 10 year mark. I'm going to do a, cover a couple of things on here. But uh, how it's been in the 10 years, well, the only big thing we've done is upgrade these batteries. And the last place, I used my old uh, solar batteries. So you can look back over my channel for, uh, and I'm using a light because uh, a little rain outside. It just happened to be the day I needed to do it. So there's the batteries I put in. You can see uh, how I did all that in previous videos. I welded a plate down at the bottom of the frame down there. And they fit in between these slots just barely. So I got them all in here, made some cables. And then the black one here, a little yellow end, that black cable, that actually goes to the winch. So I've got two of those. And check where the other one is. Oh, it's the red one on this side, which has a uh, breaker on it. At any rate, and then I've got some 12 volt wiring in here, which is the little one. It's a 12 volt run. So that's what I'm powering my uh, lights. I've got some, those run 12 or 24, which I got off eBay. You can get those, I got those years ago, uh, 10 of them for like 20 bucks a piece or something like that. And then I've got those wired up to some switches on the dash, which I bought off eBay. And then let's look at the, uh, I was going to say mileage, but it's hours, of course. So we're at 254 hours in 10 years, and I just charged it. And by the way, I'm still using my cable. And we'll look at this from the other side. The red wires, which are these big red ones running here. And then this big red one on the back side, that's the negative over there, and the positive back here, this big heavy one. Right there, which runs around to the back side. Just one we're using the light. There's the positive of the 12 volt. So, then this little trailer wire harness is what I ran all my uh, 12 volt lights with. So I've got two in the back. It's a little tight in here. They're uh, actually I got a mount under there, and they're pointed down, which actually works. A lot better than what I had expected because when you're trying to back up you need that light right behind you but they swivel and I made these plates and I did a video on that made a metal plate with a little bracket on the inside which holds the light and then I can just reach up in there and pull those down and point them more back if I need to they actually work real well you can't leave them uh, straight down because then when you flip this bed up they uh, come up and hit the tire and if you were to roll, they just bend them up just like they are now, which is how they got there. So I just left them. Don't really need to use them much. There's your controller. The problem with the uh, last uh, few videos that we were looking at was kind of a stumbling or a stuttering issue, which uh, a few people re re wrote me and said, well, you know, they had pulled all their cables off, and of course they're uh, not using these cables here because these are all custom made for these batteries. But they're still using original batteries or original type batteries. And they said, well, they found a bad connection. And one connection, uh, which I haven't looked at, I, I've pulled some cables, but you know, the one I haven't pulled is the one you can see right back there on that nut. There's two uh, cables there, and one of them runs forward and it comes up to this connection here so uh, when you turn your uh, key on in other words which is the green light you can see it brings uh, 12 volts up to your controller and I have a, this controller the reason I got a nice light here you kind of see it well, You'll see it if you've got it, but all these connections, all those bolts there are cables that are going straight down and go back to the motor. 
so that's a uh, AC motor three phase I guess at any rate and those other wires there the brown ones those are all uh, the negative side so every, nothing hooks to the frame everything is hardwired all your connections uh, for your ground are hardwired and I haven't pulled those other wires off or the one back on the motor so I'm thinking I'm going to do that next uh, this year I'm going to pull all those cables off make sure everything's nice and clean pull them off of the motor I did actually have the motor out one time so I, I have had them off in the back but I haven't had them off here in the front and I haven't had uh, I don't think I've pulled that cable on that solenoid so I'm going to check all these uh, connections because you can see uh, I had some corrosion which is why I used some battery spray on there so a couple of times uh, even with these batteries I had some corrosion one time of course after 10 years I don't think I had a problem for uh, generally a couple of years before uh, the same thing it would act like uh, yeah, the batteries were going bad is kind of what it acted like and then you'd uh, open up these uh, connections and you find one of them was uh, real corroded underneath so you were getting a bad connection and that steals your amperage and then I guess that's what makes the motor kind of stumble because when you first take off it's where your maximum amperage pull is is when you that first second basically when you hit the throttle and you start accelerating uh, it really draws down the amps and uh, that's when your maximum amps are used the other thing is when you're going slow you, you use a lot more amps which is really the way I use it. Once you're moving along, uh, then your amp draw goes down considerably. But uh, when you first take off, that's when your uh, amp draw is, and that's when you have the problem. So once you're moving, there doesn't seem to have any problem at all. Now I do have a little clicking noise, and I'm thinking uh, right under here is where the uh, drive shaft is actually this piece comes out but it's not a simple thing but right under there is where the front of the drive shaft so I did put U joints and I think I talked about that front spline where it hooks to the front drive shaft it's right up underneath there and that spline has a little bit of play in it and you know uh, I can tell that thing kind of clicks at the speed of the drive shaft so the clicking is either coming from those replacement uh, U-joints I bought, which I got off eBay, but whatever, they were cheap. And I noticed they do have a little side-to-side -side, uh, play. I couldn't really, uh, you know, come up with a good way of uh, spacing those caps uh, inward. Uh, but, you know, so they wouldn't move back and forth quite as much. So I think that's all it is. Just the uh, drive shaft makes a little bit of noise. And I got a little clicking on the uh, rear. So I've had to get some help and get some people uh, put their ear down here while where, where we're moving so I can kind of see. Because I always thought it looked, it sounded like it was coming from the rear and from the front both. And I think it is. I think I have a couple different noises plus the stuttering. But it's nothing that uh, even affects the uh, usage of the machine. I just don't use it a whole lot. I use it every day in the garden, that kind of thing. But uh, I don't drive it very far. So you can see uh, 25 hours a year is all it gets used, uh, mostly all during the summer, though. I don't really have much uh, of anything to do in the winter that I, use, that I really need the EV for. So it sits a lot. So... 25 hours I, I just as much as we use it I would never have thought that I had that low of a usage on it but I'm still on original brakes original tires and we can kind of look at one you can see they're still in reasonably good shape which is kind of funny because I bought a whole extra set off eBay when I first got the machine because I was thinking the tires were going to wear out and uh, we're still on the original tires so there's my uh, plug I just plug in my 48 volts and run that over <coughs> and since it's uh, sitting here oops well we're gonna have to plug it in all right so let's just plug that in you can actually see how it works So it just runs 
my cable runs over to a outback charge controller. Probably don't need my light for this. And there you go. So you plug it in, it starts tracking. And then it's real cloudy today, so our voltage and everything's going to be pretty low. But it'll still uh, do something. And then it switches to bulk, and then it uh, levels out and decides uh, how much amps it's going to put in. Right now, uh, 8 amps is not much, but it's pretty cloudy and overcast today. And uh, so that's what it does. And then it starts working, it starts charging up. So it's a Flex Max 80, and it just has a cable that runs over, and you plug it in, unplug it, I plug it back into the main battery, and it charges uh, into my system. When I need to charge this, I just unplug it and plug it in over here. And an hour or two, uh, of course, you got to equalize the batteries, all that kind of thing. That's uh, probably the other side of that solenoid. So there's your, uh, <laughs> kind of think of it as a starter solenoid for a car, because that's kind of what it looks like. An old Ford uh, starter solenoid. At any rate, Pulling all these connections, checking these out, be the first thing I did this year. Other than that, a little bit of noise I've had. Not a big deal. Uh, if I'd have bought uh, the Polaris uh, U-joints, maybe uh, things would have gone completely different. So, uh, I may have a, uh, sounds like I may have a CV, but I took the rear end apart. And I uh, looked at all those gears and spacing. Everything looked uh, jam up back in the back. And I had the motor tested. And he said it was basically like new. I'd take it to St. Louis to have them put it on a machine and test the torque on it and everything. And they said it was like brand new. And they just blew it out and gave it back to me. So nothing else to report. Uh, really haven't done anything. I did add a winch, but that was uh, when I first bought it. We've got uh, good videos on that. Nothing else is uh, broken on it. Uh, I did uh, put a windshield in it and a top on it because that's kind of a, you really need the windshield to keep branches and stuff from hitting you in the face if you get out in the woods at all. And then the top is just nice to uh, keep the rain off if you get caught out in the rain. I put a couple little uh, hooks on things to uh, hold my water bottle and uh, keep a rag and stuff like that. But other than that, there's just not much to report. Uh, in fact, this uh, seat here where it tore, that's the first real problem I've had with it. <laughs> they, they actually uh, breaking the U-joints, uh, of course. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, uh, there's really nothing else. I might have a little squeak or two in the suspension, but you know, you know, people want it to be perfectly quiet. It's, really uh, a little too much to expect all that but it's been extremely quiet uh, compared to some I've had uh, people say well they're squeaking so I'm thinking the uh, probably the bushings back in the back uh, a arms or whatever you need to take those out and grease them or something like that and I've actually had those off because you kind of got to do that to pull the CVs out that's not too bad I've had the motor out and Nothing to report though, everything looked like uh, like new back there. So uh, the front differential works uh, like it's supposed to. It just kind of kicks in on demand, which is the way you want it. So you get out in mud or, and I've had, uh, uh, don't have a whole lot of mud and stuff, but uh, on occasion, like today, when it's been raining a lot, that kind of thing, the yard can get pretty muddy. And I do actually flick it in four wheel drive and a couple space spots in the yard. So. It's a handy thing and don't use it much, but uh, and I haven't really uh, beat it up, just carried uh, things around and pulled trailer and stuff like that. So really don't have any problems. Uh, that's my uh, 10 year report. Uh, everything's going good. I would buy another one for sure, but I do uh, know that other people have had uh, substantial problems with them. And if, especially if you have electrical problems, that's a big issue. They did go to a lithium ion version of this, I uh, forget when it was, 2014 I think is when they went with the first uh, lithium ion. But if you look at that, the all the lithium uh, batteries are like on one side 
And there's nothing uh, much on the other. It's like, okay, but if they had filled the whole thing up with lithium batteries, then it would cost thirty, forty thousand dollars you know, whatever, because of the batteries. So, yeah, you got plenty of space there. Uh, if you wanted to go all out with the lithium battery idea, you could probably get uh, a couple hundred mile range out of this thing. <laughs> Who knows? But I don't know that it's going to go uh, much faster than it always already does. That's kind of uh, controlled by the controller. And who knows if you can go in and uh, do anything with that. Of course, you can do an aftermarket controller or whatever. But simple enough. I uh, charge it right off my solar. So it does still have the original charger up front. But that charger would not charge this amount of battery that's in here now. And I don't really know, uh, you know how far this thing will go because I just don't take it off my property. I don't have a way to go out and run it down the road at uh, 30 miles to see how far it goes before it quits so it's really hard to tell from using it in the yard because i'm kind of going up and down hills which uses a lot of the amperage and then i'm starting and stopping which uses the most amperage which is one of the reasons these batteries uh, tend to work really well they provide the power and since i'm only going short range it just works really well so other than that, just not a whole lot to say about it. It has its use. It works uh, perfectly for me. And I know some other people, uh, it's working great for them. I know one guy up in Canada has a full cab on it. He's got a little heater and <clears throat> all kinds of stuff. And he uses it to pull uh, a trailer with a boat or, I don't know, just a small fishing boat. But he uses this to pull it up a hill. Now another guy's got tracks. He's up in snow up in Canada, and you know, doesn't go very far uh, when you're putting tracks on it and you're running four wheel drive and all that kind of thing. So, uh, the battery situation is a big issue, but it works good for some people, especially around uh, maybe a business. I know people that use it for security, just run around, and then when they get back, they plug it in. I don't really know anybody that's doing the solar thing like I'm doing where they're just plugging it into panels. But it's an easy uh, thing. You just uh, put a nice, uh, I think that's a 60 amp plug, which you can get anywhere, and put some nice heavy cable on there and hook it up and plug it in. That's it. It's their uh, lead acid. Even if they were something else, you could just program it to uh, do most any kind of battery you wanted to put in there. So that's a, that's a good option. And really the way uh, people, we should be doing it, we should be charging our cars and everything off our uh, solar at home, except most people are driving them during the day. So then it becomes solar at work. So the businesses would all have to uh, do that to, uh, yeah, there's ways to make it all happen. Uh, Australia is doing a pretty good job right now of going solar and a lot of countries are working on it really hard. So uh, I'm just saying, I think Australia is probably ahead of the pack right now. But uh, there's ways to do it. It's just uh, here in America, I think you pretty much got to force people to go green. And uh, this is a good uh, green machine in that aspect. Uh, except most people just power, uh, charging it off their uh, grid or whatever, where I'm charging it off solar. That's the only big difference. So once you can do that, you could take an electric motorcycle, charge it off solar, or use uh, an EV of this type or some other. I, it's not a whole lot out there really besides this uh, Ranger. I'm sure they're still selling it uh, even in 2020. Last time I looked, they still were showing it. You just kind of hunt for it on their website to find the EV version. They still offer it. They don't uh, promote it that much, but uh, it works great. So that's all there is to report. Another 10 years, I'll do another video and tell you how it's doing in 2030. Thanks for watching.